Oh, it's it's time. It's time to start. Oh, hello. Okay. Welcome to Charcoal Pony News Now. As you can see, we've taken over the HPU News Studio. This is ours now. Charcoal Pony is... What is Charcoal Pony? Charcoal Pony is... Charcoal Pony is the on-campus improv group for High Point University, but it's not technically affiliated with the campus. It's kind of its own thing. It's run by the students. There aren't any faculty or school officials involved, so we're able to kind of uh, do what we want with comedy, teach ourselves how to make it work, and our audience has grown over and over and over again. Charcoal Pony is just the most chaotic and fantastic group of people. It is people who just are funny and have fun together and we make awesome improv and you know we just love to laugh and to make other people laugh. So we're an improv troupe but we're also a family. That's a question that I feel like was a lot easier to answer maybe a few years ago. It was an improv group, but it's it's become a phenomenon. Charcoal Pony is the greatest group of funny people that you get to hang out with, go to practice with, and perform with on a regular basis, and it's a great break from the high-stress life of college. It's seeing people on the street knowing exactly who they are. It's an amazing friend group and family. It has grown into this absolute monster that we cannot control anymore. All right, so in 2009, Maggie Jo had, um, Maggie Jo Saylor had an idea that she came to High Point under the pretense that High Point had a huge improv program. So someone on her tour in the theater department misled her. It's like, yeah, we do tons of improv because that's what MJ was interested in. In 2010, Charcoal Pony became official with their original members, Brandon Browning, um, Maggie Jo, Rankin, Tom, um, Ben Brown, Megan Santiago, and Becca Donald, and Jerry Goldenberg. And they performed together for a few shows, and a few people dropped out. The next year, um, our second round got brought in. That was people like Ryan, myself, um, Caroline Long, Doug, a guy named Patrick who quickly quit, like just, you know, random people. And um, we got a little better, a little more notoriety on campus. I think third year when we got Steven and CJ and then like that's really when it took off. Charcoal Pony was my school years. <laughs> it's made my time here a lot more enjoyable. It's a great stress reliever from all the schoolwork. Charcoal Pony affected my school years in a really weird way, I joined Pony super late. I joined Pony as a senior, which I regret every day, and Nathan tells me what a terrible decision that was. I should have joined my freshman year. Um, blame Tree Branch, everyone. She was in my class, and she didn't tell me to try out. Um, I had an amazing friend group in school, and the three years before Pony, I would you know, change for the world, but the year that I hit Pony, things blew up. I was all over the place. I was having the most fun that I could probably have. I met the most amazing people. And I'm telling you, when being a charcoal pony at this school at this point is like being a celebrity. People will stop you in the hallway, they'll stop you anywhere. I was with CJ once at, I think it was a Lupe Fiasco concert, which was a Lupe Fiasco. Um, and he was singing on stage and someone turned around and stopped us and we're like, you guys are charcoal pony. They literally stopped watching a famous rapper to ask us about Charcoal Pony and tell them us how much they loved it. It was crazy. But actually, when I came into school, when I came in, I chose a school that none of my other friends went to. I chose to go to High Point. I went out to New went to Carolina. I came here. I didn't know anyone. It was really hard for me to make friends at first because my other roommates like already had people. And I just felt really lost until I, you know, MJ emailed me and said, hey, like, reminder auditions today. And when I went and I was with these zany people and they were just goofing around, having a good time and totally welcoming. And um, Tom was gullible as hell and I liked that. So I like 
got my way into the improv troupe and I had a home. Like I had a place, I had friends and people to hang out with and they just became my, my world. There was a show that we did around Christmas time and we named it Born in a Stable because we're Charcoal Pony and Jesus was born in a stable. So we had a poster that had a nativity scene set up and on top of the angels and uh, Mary and Jesus, it was those horse masks from the YouTube videos. And we thought it was a funny looking poster, we got a lot of positive feedback from it, but someone a High Point University official, professor, some someone saw it and said we can't allow this to go around our campus, this is inappropriate. So they sent us an email saying change the poster. And we were pretty upset because we didn't think it was offensive. Um, we have plenty of Christians in the group and we were, were kind of offended that they were trying to interrupt how we run our group because they've never done that before. So we agreed to change it and we did a cartoon poster this time and it was kind of cute little cartoon, Mary and Joseph and the wise men, they're all coming to give Jesus a present, but Jesus was a little cute little horse with a halo around it, uh, and he looked like he was laughing or telling a joke or something. Um, and we were like, this is great, this is kind of family friendly, it's fun, uh, there's no way they can get upset. But again, someone saw it and said, we can't have anything to do with Jesus, Christmas, and uh, offend anyone, which is completely ridiculous because, as I said, there are plenty of Christians on the group who who said this, we're not offended by, it's something that we think is funny, and it's not like we were trying for shock value, we just thought it was a great idea and a good way to publicize this show. And once again, they didn't like it, so we thought, what can we do that no one will be offended by? And we figured no one has ever been massacred for the sake of pineapples. So the show poster ended up saying Charcoal Pony presents Born in a Stable and then it had a picture of a pineapple and that was it. Charcoal Pony is like I said a family and we got all of the nonsense that goes with that. We have the rivalries, the we call it pony incest. Behind closed doors, Shark Pony is a weird group of people. Behind closed stable doors, you are literally letting lunatics run the asylum. Shark Pony is unfortunately incestual. I say that because so many people have slept with so many other people in Shark Pony. Uh, Nathan and I have never slept with each other. Has the idea come up? No. Should it have come up? Also, no. If you think we're a fun, wacky group in front of a crowd, picture us behind closed doors where we can say anything to people that we know better than anyone. Uh, it is sometimes terrifying. It's just, everything's a bit, you, you, they were some of the funniest people. I remember the first Charcoal Pony dinner I had was at the point, and it was literally, 10 people sitting around eating, and they were all, in my opinion, the fastest people wit-wise on this campus. I think Charcoal Pony needs to be like Lonely Island. Like, I think people need to say the name Charcoal Pony, and everyone gets what that is, and everyone starts making references to obscure, obscure YouTube jokes. I'm hoping we're selling out arenas by the end of it. You know, Madison Square Garden, Wembley Stadium, where did the gladiators play? The Rome Coliseum? Depending on whether or not there's a robot uprising. Uh, I think Pony has the potential to do anything. I think, well here's the thing, I think Pony's gonna grow even bigger and that's saying something because right now they're selling out the movie theater. They're selling out the cinema all the time. Um, but as far as the future, besides just the group becoming even bigger and they're doing more sketches and there's a lot of stuff in the works that I can't say on camera right now because hmm, but Nathan will tell you that eventually. Um, I think that Pony, when you're going to look back at High Point in 10 years, that's where a lot of the big names, when you're going to say, hey, what famous alumni went here? You're going to, a lot of them are going to be part of Charcoal Pony. Uh, there's so many people that are trying to get into directing, uh, you know, there's, we have people in Second City right now. I want to write. Michael wants to direct. There's just, like, almost every person has a vision for what they want to do next. And so when you, in 10 years, someone's going to say, who went here? And then you're going to be able to focus them all back into your book, right, to Charcoal Pony.